Back at today, home built garage, and today we're going to go ahead and replace a right front wheel bearing hub assembly on this particular car. This is a 2011 Powell, something like that. But either way, I'm sure it's the same on a lot of GM products. This one is actually throwing a code for a uh, wheel speed sensor, and it's part of the actual whole hub assembly. So we're going to go ahead and tear into this. So, first little tip is these lug nuts are not one piece lug nuts, at least I don't believe they are. So you want to avoid hitting them with an impact as much as possible. Uh, the more you impact these things, the more you'll beat the crap out of that. And the next thing you know, you're going to try to get a socket on or off of it and you're going to have problems. So what I like to do is break them loose with a ratchet or breaker bar. And then from there, go ahead and take them off you can use an impact to spin them you know spin them off faster but other than that I, don't, I try not to use an impact on these things okay first things first got the wheel off i'm gonna go ahead and pop this clip off this is for the actual abs itself and there's two little ears one there and one on the other side you want to grab them probably a pair of needle nose pliers and then push this clip off the mounting bracket and then from there it will be a matter of getting two caliper bolts. I'll pop that off as one whole assembly, pull the rotor off, and then one axle nut. This isn't too bad of a job uh, for the most part. The hardest part is getting enough space to get back on. Let's see if I can find one you can actually see. Yeah, you can't right now. But there's a bolt behind there, a bolt on the other side, and a bolt up here tucked in. And them can be a pain to get to sometimes. Okay, so I got my axle assembly slid out. You know, you don't got to pull it the whole way out at this point, but enough to get access to that bolt. There's one hidden up in there, and then one on the opposite side of this one on the back. Uh, and them are 13 millimeter head on them bolts. So I'm going to go ahead and knock them out, and at that point we'll be ready to pull the actual hub assembly off the car. So up next axle nut this one is a 34 millimeter i believe is what i used on this particular model and also there's a torx bit there that holds your rotor to the wheel bearing hub assembly uh that was i believe a 30 on this one also if need be you can get this while the brake caliper is still on there that is kind of useful if you say you don't have an impact to hit that you can have somebody hold the brakes on and get a breaker bar or a ratchet on there to break that loose. And then usually a soft mallet or something, you can knock that loose. If it is seized up in there, I mean, you can put a puller or some sort on it to push it out or, you know, back the nut out to where it's flush and use a brass hammer and smack it and it'll usually come out. Other than that, if it gets really nasty, I've used a ball peen hammer, took the round end, and stuck the round end of the ball peen hammer in there and then hit on the flat end of the, the actual ball peen hammer head with another hammer. The only thing I will say doing that, be careful because you can have shards of that metal come off, go into your hands, your face, your eyes. So you definitely want to wear some protective gear if you're doing that. Okay, so I went ahead, got the bolts out, one there, one there. And that holds the whole caliper and the mounting bracket on which you're going to have to take the mounting bracket off to get the rotor off. So you might as well take it off one big piece. That way you're not messing with them if you don't have to. Uh, and we go ahead and pull that off. Get something to hang it on uh, or wire tie it up, bungee cord, whatever. You don't want it hanging on that brake hose and potentially causing damage. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so I got my three bolts off that hold the hub assembly on. And this one I think was off before some anesthes back there. And it came off really easy. They don't typically come off as easy as this one did. The one thing I will say in this matter, as far as that goes, try to avoid putting a chisel in there, you know, chiseling between these. A lot of times these spindles are aluminum. It doesn't take a lot to damage that. This is just tin. You're going to bend it. You know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do to get it apart. That's just part of this stuff. You know, you're going to run into issues. Uh, the one thing I can show you that will sometimes help you you may sacrifice a socket in doing it, but you can take your socket, put it on the back of the bolt, leave the bolt, break the bolt loose, a couple threads, and then beat on the head of the socket. 
like I said, you're probably going to damage the socket, but it'll save your bolt because chances are you didn't get new ones in. Uh, but that's one way of doing it. Another way is a slide hammer puller assembly, and sometimes that'll get them off there. But the one thing you want to pay attention to when you are doing this is where your dust shield's indexed. Uh, this one's pretty obvious. Sometimes they're not so obvious. Just something, taking it, you know, take a little picture of it or whatever with your phone. Okay, so when you're putting this in there, you're going to have to weasel this through your dust shield and through the spindle. And you'll usually push in on the axle a little bit to give you some more clearance. But you want to pay particular attention to these wires, the connector and everything when you're doing that so you're not damaging them. They're pretty small wires. It wouldn't take much to even put a nick in them. And all that would take is one little nick. And once you have some copper shown on that, at least if you're up in the northern part of the U.S. here, like I am in Pennsylvania, that salt and the crap they put on the roads in the winter will destroy that thing in one year, and you'll have ABS codes once again or, you know, some sort of ABS fault. So, got the new one in there. The one thing I will say is start all your bolts in before you tighten any of them up. So this way, if you need to move this at all, you can, and it's less likely you're going to cross thread or get a, have an issue getting a bolt in. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll take that little tab off that this clips to that with off my old AVS sensor and be able to clip that back in the factory position. Okay, so to get this off, and this is already loose, I already have it actually off, but this little tab here locks on that lock right there. So you just pull up on that tab and slide it that direction and it slides right off and then you can reuse that on your new one. All right, so I went ahead, got the hub on, got it tight. I'm gonna go ahead and throw my rotor on, then a caliper and the nut on the end of the axle. Uh, before I put the nut on, I will straighten this out right now. I just, I'm leaving it turned to put the caliper and everything on, it'll be a little easier. And other than that, it's pretty much, you know, throw your wheel on, torque everything up. I'm not gonna put torque specs down because to be honest, I don't really know exactly what they torque to. And even if I did, they can change torque specs on this stuff at any given time for any given reason. And I don't want to give you a number and have you screwing up something on your car or even worse, something happening or somebody gets hurt. So for that reason, I'm probably not gonna give any torque specs on this, but uh, use your best judgment, do some research. Got my hub on, it's tight. ABS wires hooked up, pretty much throw the rotor on, throw the caliper on, torque everything up, axle nut, the whole nine yards, throw the wheel on, and you're back together, ready to go. It's I'm not really going to do much of that on film because it's pretty much just the reverse order of what you took apart at. And as far as torque specs go, I don't have the actual legit torque specs, so I'm not going to be spouting off numbers. So I got this car wrapped up, wheels back on, torqued up, and it's good to go. I have another video on this car coming up. Should be posted pretty shortly for a accelerator pedal position sensor fault. Uh, basically, I just threw an accelerator pedal position sensor on it, which is the actual throttle pedal assembly. But anyways, I have another video project going on. It is a 2013 Audi S4. It's a wrecked car I got from Copart. I'm rebuilding. So if you're into that sort of a build and that sort of video and series, basically, there's going to be probably three or four videos of that one. Uh, please like, share, follow, and subscribe. And also check the link. I'm going to try to put it in the description to that build. Uh, till next time, stay safe out there.